What are you doing here today? I thought you were supposed to be playing golf. Well, I went by to see the doctor today. He had the results of those tests. Results of your tests? Yeah. I thought you were just having headaches. Well, it's a little bit more than that. He told me I only have 30 days left to live. Hi, I want to take you on a journey just a few moments to see exactly what Michael's facing in his life and what challenges are getting ready to come in his life. You see, in life, there are many obstacles that we're going to face. There's going to be trials and tribulations that we're going to go through that we're not going to understand. But we have to see what matters the most. Mr. Falter. Hey, how are you? Good to see you Dr. Bear. All right. Um, is your insurance correct? Yes. Your phone number correct? Nothing's changed. Thank you. What about when life doesn't turn out the way that we expected it to? What are we expected to do? Well, the Bible in Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 through 6 tells us. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lay not unto thine own understanding, but in all ways acknowledge Him. You see, sometimes life doesn't make sense. But Jesus said, Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all of these things shall be added unto you. Right. Dr. Rivera will be right with you. Thank you. Hey, Mr. Fulton. Hey. Dr. Rivera, good to see you. Call me Michael. All right, Michael, appreciate you coming in today. Well, Michael, how can I help you today? What's going on, bud? I just haven't been feeling right the last month or so. I've been, been really tired a lot. All right. Um, a few headaches here and there. Seems like at night I've been running a fever ever so often. But I just haven't been feeling myself, so I'm trying to figure out What's wrong, or if there's anything? Let me know if any of this uh, bothers you at all. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah right there, Doc. Sorry, man. I didn't hurt you. I'm kind of, kind of little tipper doing yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Okay. You see any bad bruises or anything? Not that I've noticed. Okay, beyond yeah. the normal. All right. So, what do you think of this, Doc? I'm not sure. I, I don't really think it's anything, but let's get some blood work. I figure that's the best thing to do. Check to see what's going on. We'll take you over to the lab. We're going to draw your blood. It'll be back in a couple days. I'll give you a call. We'll get you back in and we'll go from there. Sound right. good. Come on this way. Let's go on down here. Hey. Trash is sinking in the house. Do you think you can pick it up and carry it out for me? Can't you see I'm getting ready for this golf tournament? That's so important to me right now. Can't you do it yourself? You're supposed to be the man of the house. When does a golf tournament become more important than these things? All right, I'll get it sometime later. Man, I can't understand that. Whew, maybe that's why I've been so tired late and having these headaches, because all this, oh. All right, I'm just gonna concentrate on this. There are many times in life that we focus on unimportant things. There are items in our life that consume us, which have no value. Hey, Dad. Yeah, yeah. Will you play Uno with us? No, I, I don't have time. I'm working on Please, something. Please, you never play with us. I said no, I don't have time. Can't you see I'm working on something important? Hey, the church is having a family fun day tomorrow. Are you going to be able to go? Tomorrow? You know that's my golf outing with the guys I do it every week. 
course I'm not going to be able to get Hello? Hey, Michael, this is Dr. Barrow. Good afternoon. Hey, Doc, how you doing? Good, good. I got your blood work back, and, and Michael, I really need you to come back into the office. Um, it'll really be important for you. Is it possible for you to get in this afternoon? Yeah, sure. I'm headed to play golf, but I got a few minutes. I got to come right by your place anyway. So, yeah, I'll drop in. Yeah, that'd be great. I'll tell my nurses to be expecting you, and uh, I look forward to, to talking to you. Thanks. See you then. Bye-bye. Some of us just came out of a storm. Some of us were preparing to come out of a storm. But some of us were getting ready to go in a storm in our life, yet we know nothing about. Hey, Mark. Hey, Doc. Good, good to see you. Good to see you, too. Appreciate you coming in. Well, thank you. I was in the area. It's heat bad. Well, Michael, I'm sorry, but I got some really bad news. We checked your blood work, and... Your blood work's come back. It looks like you've got a, a form of leukemia. We call acute mm. leukemia. Yeah, it's a cancer. It's a cancer of the bone marrow that makes all the red blood cells and white blood cells. And when cancer gets in that area, your body is very serious. And um, it's the reason you've been feeling so bad. And it's a very progressive disease. It's very fast. That's why you're kind of feeling worse and worse every day. Well, I guess I need to go ahead and get on some medicine, right? Well, it's not as simple as just getting on medicine. If you're going to have to go in the hospital, have a lot of testing, and be put on chemotherapy, and, and maybe some other treatments. Doc, you're talking like I'm going to die or something. Well, if we don't get this treated and you don't respond, 30 days. 30 days? I'm afraid so. It's 30 days. Well, Doc, yeah. i got to go see my family. I, I can't go to the hospital right now. I have to go see my family. We really need to put you in the hospital today. We can't wait. Doc, there's a church camp they're at. I've been pushing it off. I haven't been with them. i got to go get things right and straight with my family first. Can I do that? Well, why don't you go see your family, get things together, then let me meet you at the hospital this evening. I have to, I've been so stupid. I have to go. I have to go see my family, Doc. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and get that done, though. Let's, let's get you over there as quickly as we can. And again, I'm really sorry. Um, and... Uh, We'll, get, we'll do the very best we can. Well, thank you, Doc. I, I have to get things straight. Thank you. Thank you. Can you imagine how Michael must feel after receiving that shocking news that his life is getting ready to flash right before his eyes? You see, the Bible tells us clearly that we should recognize that our days here on this earth are limited. What are you doing here today? I thought you were supposed to be playing golf. Well, I went by to see the doctor today. He had the results of those tests. The results of your tests? Yeah. I thought you were just having headaches. Well, it's a little bit more than that. He told me I only have 30 days left to live. 30 days? What are you talking about? It's acute leukemia. God will provide. God will make a way. He's always provided, but this is just so unreal. We'll just spend the rest of this time together as a family. When storms approach us in our lives, we're more willing to change. You see, Michael has recognized that and recognized that it's now time to spend time with his family and value those precious moments. Hello guys, my name is Terry. Welcome to the refuge. Hey, it's good to be here. Good. Be here. I hope y'all are gonna have some fun canoeing. We sure are. So let's get you set up. Um Dad, will you see if you can wear that? I think that may fit you.
Sometimes life doesn't make sense. But Jesus says, Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all of these things shall be added unto you. What if you knew for sure that you only had 30 days left to live here on this earth? What things would become important in your life? What things would suddenly become unimportant in your life? What things would be discarded and what things would still remain if you only had 30 days left to live? Personally, if I knew that I had only 30 days left to live here on this earth, surely it may open my eyes to see blessings as blessings rather than bearing them like burdens. You see, Michael's a father that's lost completely focus of his family on his personal hobbies and so consumed at work. Oftentimes we ask ourselves, why is life so short? Sometimes I believe life is short so that it has an immediate meaning. I remember like it was yesterday, Thursday, January the 9th of 2014, when I walked home and there laid my mother flat on her bed as if to be if she was sleeping. Well, I didn't know, but my mother was unresponsive, not breathing. I never knew the night before was going to be the last time that I would ever speak to her here on this earth again on January the 8th. There's not a day that goes by that I don't miss her. I love and miss her dearly. But I thank God for the 17 years that I was able to spend with her. As we've seen, Michael's been given 30 days left to live, but life is not always that way. My mother was not given 30 days left to live. Her life ended suddenly. But I am thankful that she believed in the Lord Jesus Christ as her personal Savior. Because I know without a doubt that she's in a much better place, and that place is called heaven. And the Bible says that if we truly believe in the verse John 3, 16, that for God so loved the world that He sent His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And for that assurance, I know that she's in a much better place with no more pain and no more suffering. In life, you're going to fall down. You're going to feel like you're working on your own strength sometimes. But God will never leave us, nor will He forsake us. You see, folks, the cross is controversial. That's something you accept or you deny. There's no middle ground. There's no in-between. I want to ask you the question today. What if you knew for sure that you only had 30 days left to live here on this earth?